Hi guys, Ali Taylor here, and today we're gonna to talk about how to create an effortless, powerful golf swing. Right, that sounds awesome, doesn't it? Effortless, powerful golf swing. We all want one of those, don't we? Now, it's funny actually because a lot of comments I get about my golf swing, I'm gonna talk about positive comments I get about my golf swing, is guys talk about how effortless my golf swing looks, and yet I do generate some good club head speed. I would say it gets questioned from time to time on videos, but honestly, when I'm using TrackMan, it's phenomenally accurate measuring my club head speed. But some of the things I'm gonna talk about, the three key things I'm gonna talk about in this video, I feel I do really, really well I'd say naturally. I think some of it I've kind of done without thinking about over the years. Other bits I've kind of done a little bit of and need to improve. So I think there's three key things we need to do to create that effortless, powerful golf swing. Right, so the first thing we need to do is, I think, get ourselves into a very athletic position at address. Now, certainly from face on, I think most of the time you don't really see much with guys from face on posture wise but certainly as we look down the line I think a lot of the time we get guys and they just literally either from here they just literally sit down to get to the golf ball or there's not really much knee flex and they just round the backs to get down and the legs are fairly straight now obviously one of the things we need to do to create speed and power is we need to interact with the ground but we have to have our bodies in an athletic position and be very very engaged so i always think a great way of getting people to feel that athletic setup is i'll show face on first and then i'll go down the line is almost get shoulder width and imagine that you're going to jump into the air you kind of squat down and then go. So what I want you to feel is that you just do the very first bit. So you go slight squat and then let your arms hang down. So you see from this angle, we'd normally go squat down and go. We're just gonna start and we see straight away there, we get into really good shape with the legs. I feel really, really engaged with my glutes. Those are your biggest muscle group. They're gonna create some great power, but also give you some really good stability in the golf swing. I think naturally we then put our backs into a really good position. And I think if you can get anywhere near that position, that is a fantastic starting point to create that effortless, powerful golf swing. So it's kind of easy to feel it there. So what we'd then do is maybe just get the club up in front of you, from there, feel like you're gonna jump. There you go, straight in. And then I can just tilt from my pelvis forward to the golf ball. And for me, straight away, like I said, I feel very engaged. I feel like all my muscles are ready to go. And I don't see many guys with powerful golf swings, particularly nowadays, without a good athletic setup. I think in the past, yes, I think we've seen some golfers get away with it but I do think that needs to be your first kind of building block to creating that effort, creating that power. So from that initial setup then, that takes us on to the second part. Now, this is something I think the biggest difference I've seen between tour players and amateur golfers is the way that as we swing the golf club, a lot of golfers, club golfers, get to the top of the swing quite, looks quite nicely, and then from there, everything starts to move towards the target. Now it's funny though, when you watch the best players in the world, as the upper body's going back, the lower body is already going this way. And it's kind of how we separate what the lower and upper body do. Now I would say, to be fair to a lot of golfers, they do struggle with a, a little bit of separation. So I think a really good way of looking at the top players is it's almost as in the backswing, their arm, that lead arm gets parallel to the ground. Even though it's gonna keep going, their lower body is already going forward. It creates more of a stretch, transfers some energy through the, the torso of the body and really gives you that ability to get firing from there. So for most golfers, I've said that I don't think do it particularly well in the golf swing. 
I actually think we've all got a skill that we've learned as children that we do it really, really well already. And it's basically when we throw. Now, not so much when we're just throwing something a yard or two, but if you watch anybody when they throw a ball, you will see that as their arms going back, they step forward, and as the lower body's going one way, the arm and upper body's still opening up. So you see a big stretch across the upper body, and that's how they create that power. So that's, as they go in, they're already stepping and go. So that can be a great little feeling in your golf swing, is you can stand there and get that feeling that, imagine you were gonna throw your golf club. I'm not gonna throw my golf club because it'll go into somebody else's garden, and I would never ever say throwing a golf club is a good thing. But I can imagine that I'm gonna let go of the club. So I'm gonna feel that as I'm going back, I'd be stepping across and throwing. And straight away, the noise that you can hear there is huge. So again, I'm gonna imagine I'm gonna throw the club. Probably not quite as good on that one. And one more. And that, honest to God, is the biggest difference between the top elite players and a lot of the guys who really, really struggle to hit the shots they want. And if there's only one thing you do really well from this video, that in itself will make a big difference. It can feel a little bit awkward when you're not used to it, but I think the throwing concept, you definitely do it better, but it's then trying to get that feeling in your swing. And like I said, just almost as the hands are passing waist height, you should already feel that you're going across into that lead side. And it'll definitely stop one of the things you see with golfers is that as they swing back, they really shift this way. From there, there's a lot of catching up to do. So like I said, once the hands get past waist height, try and feel that you're already moving towards the target. And straight away, you're gonna start separating upper and lower body, creating much more energy in your swing. And you're gonna create that speed without putting physical effort in. And when you put that physical effort into hitting the golf ball, that's when you tighten up, you struggle with impact, and really, really hit a lot of poor shots from there. So that was the second part. The third and final part, I think is very much about how that trail wrist kind of works in the downswing and through impact. So again, if I talk about what I see maybe a lot of club golfers do, is that as good as they might be on the way back, and we can see this angle here between my forearm and the club shaft. We tend to see with a lot of club golfers that that angle gets lost very, very quickly. So that club head is already accelerating. It's already probably going at its quickest about now, and then it's slowing into impact. And we get that very, very weak impact position, lots of loft, no compression of the golf ball. And even if it's a good strike, we just don't hit the ball anywhere. So I think a great feeling for a lot of guys, again, I'll use the throwing a ball is a great thing. If you watch somebody throw, as they go back, you'll see that shape in their arm. And as they throw, that shape gets maintained as long as possible and then is released for the ball. But it's released kind of towards the target. Now, what you would see somebody in a golf swing would do, would already be going. And it's very difficult to generate any speed with that arm if you're going that way. So if we can keep that feeling almost as long as possible and then almost feel after impact that that arm straightens, that's where we're going to feel a big difference in speed. Right, so I'd have a couple of practice swings with that first. So get back, feel that kind of angle, and then just try and feel I can hold that as long as I can. Now definitely I feel when I do that as well that my body really opens up a lot more, which, which is something I've spoken about on other videos. So I definitely do this without a golf ball to start with. So if you are somebody who gets more of that, I can hear that noise with the club. Kind of maximum feels about there, the loudest bit of the sound. 
So we're going to try and swing back. We're going to try and keep that angle as long as possible in the downswing. And then after where impact would be, we're going to let that go like we're throwing that ball down into the ground. Let's try that a few times. Feels very, very quick. And only when I feel fairly comfortable with that would I start introducing the golf ball. And I wouldn't necessarily wonder or bother about where the golf ball was going to begin with. I'd really just try and feel that as long as possible, feel some speed, feel some power. And if we can put those three steps together, that's gonna make a huge difference to your shots. Right then guys, so like we said there, three key things for you to create an effortless, powerful golf swing. You know, might be difficult to do all three in one go, but if you can feel initially that you get nice and athletic at address, that gives you that kind of foundation to create some power. If you can then get that upper and lower body separating better, I mean, I made the comment when I was talking about the tip, for me, that's probably the key one. I think even if your setup's not as athletic as possible, the more power you're gonna generate in that golf swing without trying to hit the ball harder and harder. So separation becomes really, really key. Don't think a lot of you guys, if you're videoing yourselves, are gonna see the separation that the best players in the world do, unless you start spending the time on the physical side that they do. But you will definitely be able to do it better than you currently do. And that third and final one is really kind of holding on to the energy as long as possible. So we, when we do fire at the end, we tra transfer maximum energy through that club head into the golf ball. And once we can start timing that with a good strike, the shots will absolutely blow your mind. So guys, hope you've enjoyed today's video. If you have, like and share it, comment below. I'll get back to as many people as I can. If you've enjoyed today's video and you don't currently subscribe, please consider clicking the subscribe button, ringing the notification bell, and then you'll find out whenever I drop a new video. Follow me on all my social media platforms, all under Ali Taylor Golf. Hopefully catch up with some guys down here soon. Stay in contact.